what I'm about to share with you completely blows my mind. And by the end of this video, you'll see why our timeline of civilization might be completely wrong. Because I'm going to share evidence that humans may have lived in stable, permanent settlements almost a million years earlier than we've been taught. And if that's true, it rewrites everything we thought we knew about the past. Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michael. I have a degree in ancient history and on this channel, we discuss the unexplainable mysteries of our past. Let's get into it. The mainstream view goes something like this. Early humans were apparently nomads, roaming the land, hunting and gathering. Civilization, we're told, didn't begin until only 5,000 years ago. Permanent settlements, no earlier than 10,000 years ago. And real intelligence, language, culture, abstract thinking, supposedly didn't appear until just 50,000 years ago, during the so-called cognitive revolution. But what if that story is wrong? What if early humans were never as simple as we've been led to believe? What if the roots of civilization don't go back thousands of years, but hundreds of thousands? One archaeological site in particular shatters the traditional timeline. Gersher Benut Yaakov in modern-day Israel, dated to nearly 800,000 years ago and linked to Homo heidelbergensis, this site isn't just a scattering of ancient tools. No, it shows signs of repeated human occupation, and not for days or weeks, but across multiple layers spanning millennia. This wasn't a quick stop-off, it was almost certainly a permanent settlement. The evidence for this is striking. Repeated, controlled use of fire in the same place again and again across layers of time, spatial organization, specific areas carved out for different tasks, seasonal patterns in what they ate, suggesting they stayed all year round. Just look at this quote. The team was able to determine that fish were a regular part of the diet. The results suggested that they were cooked and eaten year round. There is no evidence they migrated here. These aren't the behaviors of nomads following resources. No, this all points to long-term, settled, structured life. But weirdly, Gesher Benut Yaakov sits in an exposed, open environment. No caves, no natural shelter anywhere nearby. So for people to live here, they would have surely needed protection from the elements. They would have needed structures. But while there is no evidence of this, everything else, the fire, the planning, the consistent repeated use, whispers a powerful truth, that they lived here permanently. Now it's important to illustrate just how drastically this flies in the face of the conventional view. We're taught that humans didn't develop the cognitive ability to achieve these things until around 50,000 years ago, and that we didn't stop being nomadic until only 10,000 years ago. But this site potentially pushes back both these capabilities by almost a million years. It's utterly paradigm shifting. But I know what people may say, Mike, how can you claim this is a permanent settlement, a village or a town, when we don't find any preserved architecture? There's no actual evidence of structures. Well, I'm now going to show you why. Let me direct your attention to another site that, quite frankly, also shatters the conventional timeline. The Colombo structure, located in modern-day Zambia, contains something we're told shouldn't exist, an engineered structure deep in prehistory. This site is nearly half a million years old, yet a wooden platform consisting of interlocking logs, joined by U-shaped notches and secured at right angles with tapered ends, is clear evidence of deliberate construction, of structural engineering. It suggests the people who built it were cognitively advanced and lived in settled communities, completely challenging the prevailing view. And crucially, the Colombo structure was built by Homo heidelbergensis, a precursor to Homo sapiens and the same species likely responsible for Gersha Benot Yaakov. Now, the only reason the Colombo structure has survived at all is because it was preserved, buried in waterlogged sediment, which protected it from decay. But that also means it's likely just one of countless others that have been lost to time. Archaeologist Larry Barnum, co-author of the study, said, quote, This is a disruptive discovery. I never would have thought that pre-Homo sapiens would have had the capacity to plan something like this. And he's right. Colombo suggests that mainstream anthropologists were off by about 400,000 years regarding the advent of structural engineering. This is quite the error, and if they were that wrong about this, they could be wrong by similar margins on other developmental claims. But crucially, this one discovery demolishes the idea that early humans lacked the skill or foresight to build. They didn't just survive, they engineered. So when we look at Gesher Benut Yaakov and wonder why we don't see houses, the answer is painfully simple. They did build them, 
but wood simply decays. To put it simply, there are only two options on how we can explain what was happening at Gersha Bernot Yakov, on how we can explain a constant hominin presence at a site that is completely exposed. Option one is that Homo heidelbergensis kept coming back to the exact same spot over and over again for thousands of years. They sat out in the open with no shelter, even though it got brutally cold. They somehow survived that way, and they kept doing it so consistently that patterns literally formed in the earth displaying how they used the space. But this option asked us to believe some pretty bizarre things, like they had fire, tools, and long-term memory of places, but never figured out how to build a simple shelter, even though we know they could, as displayed by Colombo Falls. It asks us to believe that they returned to this exact same spot over and over again for millennia, but regularly left again, despite their ability to sort food here all year round. It asks us to believe that they survived brutal nights out in the open with nothing to protect themselves. Conveniently, advocates of this option feel no burden to explain how this was achieved. So that leaves option two, that they lived there permanently, that they built wooden shelters, they shared tasks and passed down skills across generations, and that the only reason we don't see their homes is because wood and fabric rot over time. After 800,000 years, those things are long gone. To accept the first view, you must accept that Homo heidelbergensis had advanced behaviours like fire use and multi-generational spatial consistency, yet somehow lacked the simple survival critical practice of building structures, despite being known to do so. To accept the second, you only have to accept that wooden structures decay. Occam's razor clearly favours the second. It requires fewer assumptions, matches known capabilities, and aligns better with how human adaptation works. So in my view, the most reasonable conclusion is that our ancestors were building permanent stable settlements as far back as 800,000 years ago, possibly even longer. And that, quite frankly, rewrites the entire timeline of human history. Now, many will say you can't prove it, as we don't have the wood or hide remains of said structures. But what we do have is the context, the behaviour, and the biology. And while that may be indirect evidence, it's still powerful. And I want to make abundantly clear just how shockingly unreasonable the opposite claim is. The claim made by mainstream academia that humans didn't build any kind of shelter until 750,000 years after this. This isn't just cautious scepticism, it's an extraordinary claim. It asks us to believe that early humans, with fire, tools, social coordination and repeated site use consistent over millennia, somehow never thought to build a single structure, even though we know they could do this. So I'm not saying we can definitely prove they built shelters at Gersha Benot Yakov, but all signs point to the fact that they probably did. And refusing to even consider that possibility in the face of mounting evidence isn't being careful, it's being dogmatic. To further this point, let's take a step back and really look at what kind of an animal a human is. We have no fur, we cannot survive on raw food, our babies are helpless for years, and without fire, shelter, clothing and community, we simply wouldn't survive. But these aren't nice extras, they're built into how we live. In fact, they're so essential that our biology depends on them. Our guts are tuned for cooked food. Our skin assumes we'll wear something. We're not adapted to the wild. We're adapted to domestic living. And then there's language. We don't just talk, we're wired to communicate. Our brains have specialised regions that exist purely to process and produce complex speech. We carry the FOXP2 gene, which helps control vocalisation. And even isolated children, when raised together without a shared language, will invent one, complete with grammar. That's how deep this runs. Language isn't a learned trick, it's a biological feature. The skulls of anatomically modern humans from 300,000 years ago already accommodate these regions, suggesting they were not only present but functional. But here's the thing, Neanderthals had these traits too. Their skulls had space for language centers. They had FOXP2, so our shared ancestor, Homo heidelbergensis, likely did as well. This all raises a huge problem for the mainstream view. If we've had these biological specializations for hundreds of thousands of years, what were we doing with them? Sitting around, not talking, not organizing, not planning or building? That doesn't make sense. Evolution doesn't give you a high-powered brain and a voice box for no reason. These traits had to already be useful. That level of specialization does not arise unless the behaviors that selected for it already existed. Evolution doesn't invent future use cases. 
It's rewards traits that work in the present. And crucially, these traits only work in structured long-term communities, where you need to coordinate tasks, teach your kids, solve problems, and pass down knowledge. So civilization didn't come out of nowhere 10,000 years ago. The blueprint for it has been in our anatomy for hundreds of thousands of years. And that suggests that civilization, or something like it, existed much, much, much earlier than we've been led to believe. Now let's flip the script for a moment. Imagine our civilization collapsed tomorrow. Not in fire and explosions, but quietly. Now fast forward 100,000 years. What would still be here? What would future archaeologists find to try and understand who we were? The truth is, almost nothing. Most of what we build isn't meant to last centuries, let alone millennia. Wood rots, fabric disappears, metal corrodes, bricks crumble. Everything would be ground down by time and nature. What would remain? A few stone tools, maybe. Changes in the soil from where we once grew crops. Traces, but not explanations. Nothing that clearly says these people had cities, ships, laws, language. And that's us, a global civilization with writing, power grids, and computers. Now ask yourself, if that's what would be left of our world, how much harder is it to find evidence of a community from 800,000 years ago who built with nothing but wood, plant, and hide? This is the preservation problem. It's not just a gap in the record, it's a distortion. It tricks us into thinking that nothing existed. But deep time erases everything soft everything human. So when we look at sites like Gesher Benot Yakov and don't find preserved homes, that's not surprising. That's exactly what we would expect. The real danger isn't that we're missing the evidence. It's that we've convinced ourselves that its absence proves nothing was there. Another major flaw in the mainstream narrative is the idea that because some early humans were nomadic, all early humans must have been nomadic. As if movement equals primitiveness, and settling down only came later with farming. But evolution doesn't move in a straight line. It loops, branches, and sometimes even goes in reverse. Just look at dolphins. Their ancestors were four-legged mammals that walked on land. Evolution isn't about progress, it's about adaptation. So surely it's entirely possible, even likely, that early humans experimented with many ways of living. Some groups may have stayed put for long stretches, building structures and stable communities. Others may have nomadically moved with the seasons. We're extremely adaptable, and both strategies are human. Neither is more natural than the other. In fact, we still see this diversity today. Modern humans live in everything from permanent cities to nomadic camps. That doesn't make any of us less evolved, it just shows how flexible we are. So the argument that early humans must have been nomadic until only 10,000 years ago isn't just outdated, it ignores how evolution actually works. Some groups were nomadic, but that doesn't mean that structured living didn't exist earlier. It just means we've assumed uniformity where there was likely diversity. And in doing so, we've overlooked the real story. So where does all this leave us? It leaves us with a story that looks very different from the one we've been told. One where civilization wasn't a sudden invention, but a slow unfolding rooted deep in our biology, our behavior, and our earliest ancestors. The mainstream timeline asks us to believe that humans had the cognitive capacity for complex language and structural engineering for over 400,000 years, but only started thinking symbolically, building structures, or organizing socially 50,000 years ago. It doesn't add up. The simpler explanation, the one supported by biology, evolution, and the few fragile archaeological traces we do have, is that structured cooperative living goes way back, that early humans built shelters, used language, passed down knowledge, and lived in stable communities long before the Neolithic, that sites like Gesher Benot Yakov and Colombo Falls aren't strange outliers, they're part of a pattern we're only beginning to see. Yes, much of the evidence has vanished time is brutal. But what hasn't vanished? The spatial order, the repeated behavior, the physical traits that make us human, all point in the same direction. The mistake wasn't just underestimating ancient people. The mistake was assuming that, until recently, they weren't really people at all. It's time to rethink the timeline, because the truth is, humanity didn't just randomly wake up 50,000 years ago. We were already awake. We've just forgotten how far back the dream began. Thanks for watching, guys. I've just launched a brand new Patreon, so sign up for that for loads of bonus content and to help support my work. Please let me know what you think in the comments, and as ever, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to my channel.